Hi everyone, this is Michael Eilbrock with Diesel Laptops and uh, today in this uh, tech tip video I'm going to show you how to diagnose uh, an injection pump, any injection pump for that matter, with an oscilloscope. Okay, And uh, how we're going to accomplish this task is we're going to hook up to the low side fuel pressure sensor Okay, that's on the low side for the gear pump. All right, I'm going to hook up to the signal wire of the sensor. That way we can look at the pressure drops on the low side. And then the next uh, connection that I'll have is a uh, vacuum transducer on the inlet side of the pump so I can look at the restriction uh, level of the low side as well. And then I'm going to hook up to the uh, crankshaft and camshaft sensor so I can use that for timing reference. And then I will also use an injector sink on injector number one. And then I will put a current clamp around each common rail pumping valve unit um, on this Packard MX-13 engine. All right, so how it works on this design is the injection pump has two solenoids on top of the pump. And what it does is fuel goes into the uh, plunger, the solenoid then uh, energizes, it closes it off, and then it's able to pressurize the fuel inside that plunger, and then it sends that high pressure fuel to the common rail. Okay, that's how this design works. And on this pump camshaft, each plunger has three camshaft lobes to it. Okay, now I also want to look at the rail pressure sensor signal wire for the high side because I want to look at that and I want to compare it to the low side pressure and also what the common rail pumping valve units are doing as well. Okay, So how I'm going to show you how to diagnose this system is and how to look for the difference is um, due to the fact that the common rail pumping valve units, they're solenoids and they're on top of the pump, I can actually disconnect one of the solenoids, create a fault, and then I can show you what a bad capture looks like and then what a good capture looks like. Okay, And I will also prove to you which solenoid I'm disconnecting because I've also hooked up the Texas software here. So I've got it all ready to go and I can show you when I disconnect one of the common rail pumping valves that you will lose pressure output. Okay, so. Uh, when you do that, and if when you were uh, hooked up to a vehicle in question that had an issue, um, by looking at this type of pressure waveform, you'll be able to tell if you have something going on on the inside of the injection pump. Okay, so it can prove you know it's not pr uh, providing enough pressure. So at that point, you know it could be a cracked plunger, it could be a worn camshaft lobe. Um, it could be an electrical problem to the solenoid as well. So that's why I also want to look at the solenoid current while I'm doing this test. Okay. Um, keep in mind though, before you start doing this type of testing, you're going to have to get some known good waveforms so you know what's good and what's bad. Okay. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, start the test. I'm going to crank over the engine. I've got my scope now set on um, a fast capture, so that's basically, it's just drawing all the resources from uh, the memory of uh, my tablet here, and it's uh, capturing right now, and basically what it does is it helps increase your sample rate on uh, the scope, okay? So I'm doing it this way because I want to show a nice, clean, crisp capture here for you so I can explain this to you. Um, you'd also be able to go out on uh, longer screens if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do it this way because this will be quick and easy for us, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start up the truck. Uh, we'll get the known good capture. I'll explain it, and then I will disconnect the common rail pumping valve unit, and then I'll show the difference, okay? So I'll, let me start the truck.
Okay, so we've got the capture, and now I'm going to go over with everybody uh, what is what. Okay, so the yellow trace is the camshaft position sensor signal. The red trace is the crankshaft position sensor signal. And then injector one current is going to be this purple trace. And then uh, common rail pump valve uh, one is going to be the brown current trace here and common rail pump valve unit number two is going to be the orange current trace here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to uh, process data and I'm going to make a couple adjustments here. I'm basically going to vertically enhance my pressure waveforms for the low side fuel pressure and then also for the common rail pressure so we can see those drops in pressure more accurately. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to uh, zoom out. And I'm going to move the green trace, which is my low side fuel pressure. I'm going to move it down. Move my rail pressure down. All right, and now I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay, and let's see. So we can see here. Let me actually vertically enhance the um, the rail pressure just a little bit more. There we go. That's better. I'll just scroll this back down. And then let me go right here. There we go. That's much better. Uh, this got a little bit of hash to it, so I'm just going to uh, do smooth data to clear it up. So that's basically a filter. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to here. And now, as we can see here on our trace for the white trace here, that is our rail pressure right now. Okay, so every time an injector fires, you get a drop in rail pressure. So you can see the pressure drops of all the injectors here when they're firing. Now, these uh, current waveforms here, these aren't the injectors. These are the common rail pumping valves on the injection pump. The brown trace is common rail pumping valve number one. The orange one is common rail pumping valve number two. Okay, so how this basically works is the uh, when the common rail pumping valve is uh, closing off and developing pressure for it to build to go into the rail. Each one of these actually fires uh, before <clears throat> the, uh, the next cylinder fires, okay? So if I go to my pan hand here and just go this way a bit, you'll notice that on the purple trace here for injector one current, let me just, I'll zoom in on this. Here's uh, injector one current, the purple trace. If you look at the solenoid before it, this is common rail pump valve uh, number one right here, okay? So this valve right here is basically pressurizing fuel uh, 100, it's basically like 120 degrees out before the next injection event fires, okay? So it's 120 degrees before that, so it basically it, the the common rail pumping valves alternate between the two, okay? So uh, one fires uh, at 120 degrees before to pump and then an injection event happens and then the other common rail pumping unit, it builds pressure and then after that, then the next inject, it would be, this orange trace here is going to be before the next uh, injector which would be uh, cylinder five, okay? So that, that's how this is working. Now, 
Something else that is really nice about this, if you understand the construction of the injection pump and how many camshaft lobes it has, you can figure out you know, what the degree is apart. So it has uh, three camshaft lobes on each plunger. So if you take 360 degrees and you divide that by three, you get 120 degrees apart, okay? So what that means is, these plungers here are firing at 120 degrees apart from each other, okay? And then, if you think about the, the degrees on um, the two plunger, the one plunger being apart from itself, that is actually 240 degrees apart, all right? So if I zoom out here, let me get the cursors. So from here, to here that's 240 degrees okay and I'll prove it to you so what I'm gonna do is let me zoom back out and I'm going to do degree rulers here and I'll show it to you in degrees of crankshaft rotation all right so I'm just gonna zoom in here and actually what I'm gonna do first before I do that I'm going to go to process data and I'm going to do a frequency plot of the crankshaft position sensor. All right, so let me do a frequency plot. So what you're seeing here with the red trace, if you notice with the frequency plot, every time the frequency goes down, basically right here where my little magnifying glass is, that is indicating when the piston is going up to top dead center, okay? So it's looking at the crankshaft position sensor, the frequency of it, and every time the frequency goes down, that is indicating top dead center uh, on the piston, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll this down, and we're going to use this for our reference for lining up top dead center to look at our timing, all right? Now I'm going to zoom in here. And right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cursors and I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the very dip of this frequency at my number one injection event right here. I'm going to line that up best I can. Okay, right there. Then I'm going to take the other cursor and I'm going to go right here, put it in about, oh, the middle right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go to mark cylinders. So I've already got set for six cylinders, mark cylinders. And the firing order is 153624. I'm going to have it on ignition. That's basically for injection on diesel as well. I'm going to hit enter. And now all my cylinders are marked, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the uh, degree rulers here and I'm gonna show you how these are spaced apart. So I'm gonna zoom into just a section of the common rail pumping units here. Okay, I'm gonna get my cursors. So if I go from this end here, from when this fires, to when this one fires right here, we get 120 degrees, okay? So they're firing 120 degrees apart. Now, the individual plungers, it has a spacing of 240 degrees apart. So if I take this measurement ruler and I go over here to the other common rail pump valve unit, which is the same one, mind you, which would be common rail pump valve number one. Now I've got 240 degrees, okay? And what did I say about the pump camshaft? Okay, so on the pump camshaft, it's got three lobes. You take 360 degrees, you divide it by three, and that gives you uh, 120 degrees apart for the camshaft lobes in this injection pump. 
Uh, one thing I've noticed is a lot of injection pumps have this same design, okay? So this is gonna be a good technique to verify timing of the common rail pumping valves for tons of different types of vehicles, okay? So now that I've, I've showed you that and how the spacing um, is going for the common rail pumping valves, here's something else that's kind of cool that I want you to see. So let me zoom back out here. And now I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of some of these channels here for a second. I'm going to get rid of the camshaft. And I'm going to get rid of the uh, crank frequency real quick. And then I'm going to take off the markers just for a little bit. And I want you to pay attention to the green trace and the white trace, okay? So if you look on the green trace here, every time a common rail pumping valve energizes, okay, fuel has to be put in there, okay? So the fuel is going in, it energizes, and when it energizes, when it takes the fuel and then starts to squish it, you see a drop in pressure right here on the low side uh, fuel pressure sensor, okay? So then if I zoom in even more on this, we can see it even better now, okay? So every time a common rail pump valve unit opens, you're going to have a drop in your low side fuel pressure because it's taking the fuel pressure from the low side and then it squishes it, compresses it, and then it goes into the rail, okay? And then at the same time, we can also see on the white trace that on the rail pressure sensor, every time the injector fires we get a drop in rail pressure okay so if you had an injector that was sticking closed you wouldn't see this pressure drop if you had an injector that was sticking open you would see a way lower pressure drop okay so this is very beneficial uh to to diagnose these injection pumps okay so um for example, if we had, if we noticed that one of these drops here uh, lined up with the common rail pump valve current wasn't there, then that would tell me that that plunger is not building pressure, okay? So you could have drivability issues, you could have, you know, rough running, um, you might not have any trouble codes, okay? I've experienced this before, I've diagnosed these pumps quite a bit, okay? For the, uh, on the common side anyway. But, but anyway, if you don't have this pressure drop here, then that is indicating to you that the pump is not bringing in the fuel to build the pressure inside the plunger, okay? I don't know about you, but that is really cool, okay? So you can look at that and then in conjunction with your rail pressure, okay? Now, the other thing that I also did was I was looking at the vacuum of uh, the gear pump inlet, all right? So let me go back to process data and I'm just going to stretch out the gear pump vacuum here a bit so we can see it better. So here's the, the blue trace, that's at the vacuum on the inlet of the pump. And as we can see here, it's pulling about Yeah, about uh, five inches of vacuum, it looks like. So that's, that's pretty good. That's not too bad at idle. So now if we wanted to see this in better detail, I could just go to process data and hit smooth, and then it clears it up for you, okay? But one thing, if you notice here, do you notice how all of these humps here are relatively even and nice and smooth, okay? So, that tells me a couple things. So the first thing is the vacuum level is restriction is in within spec. But the other thing this is telling me is, is that the gear pump that's inside there right now is in pretty good shape because it's got nice even vacuum events, okay? So right here at the bottom here, this is where the pump is not pulling and it's putting out pressure. But then as it rises, this is the pump actually pulling a vacuum 
to suck the fuel in right here. And they all look relatively even and in good shape. So if you had a problem on the low side of your, of your pump with the gears or something, you would see it in this trace, okay? So now that I've gone over pretty much the basics of uh, what you're supposed to look at when you're looking at this type of injection pump, this is on a Packard MX-13 engine. It's a 2014 P Peterbilt, yep, same truck. <laughs> and uh, th it's on th that model. And the, uh, the, the cool thing is here is that, like I said, this technique can be used on any type of injection pump. You don't have to have solenoids on there, okay? The reason why I think this is really cool to show is due to the fact there is solenoids on top of this injection pump, I can create a fault and I can show you what the fault looks like, okay? So that's, that's my main point here, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to um, unplug common rail pump valve unit number one Okay, and then I'm going to show you the difference in the pressure waveforms here, okay? So let me just zoom out to there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit uh, start fast capture. I'll just have that roll. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, unplug the common rail pump valve unit. And then uh, we will uh, look at the capture again. Okay, so I just disconnected the common rail pump valve uh, unit number one. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go to uh, software. I'm gonna start up the truck and then I'm gonna prove to you that I disconnected it and it's gonna show up on the fault code screen with the, uh, the Texas software, okay? So I'm gonna start the truck. And there we go, as you can see, common rail pump unit number one coded when active, okay? So now I'm gonna go back to here, and now I'm gonna stop the scope and I'm gonna show you the difference, okay? Save this real quick. Okay, I saved it. So now I'm going to go to process data. I'm going to go magnify that one rail pressure fuel pressure okay and now I'm going to scroll this down a bit but if you don't notice already there's a, a distinct difference in the white capture which is your rail pressure Okay, so now what I'm going to do is zoom window, let's go in, and now I'm going to find uh, the, the blue trace here, actually the green trace. There we go. All right, now I'm going to go zoom in. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, put up some cursors. And actually, I'm going to let me do this. Let's do frequency plot.
So I want to be able to see the cylinder top dead center relationship. There we go. There we go. That up a little bit. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is, let me zoom in here. Now I'm going to do my cursors, mark cylinders. Okay. All right, so now I got my firing order. And if you look, at the green here this is the one of the de uh, dead giveaways as well okay so i unplugged common rail pumping valve unit number one okay common rail pumping valve unit should be firing right here after number one on this marker right here okay so if you look here down at the green trace notice there is no drop in pressure because the plunger is not taking any fuel in on the low side all right, and it's also ID'd in the rail pressure as well, okay? So right here, you see a drop here in pressure. That's from the injector opening, but this flat spot here, that is indicating that the other plunger did not contribute to build the pressure to make it elevated like this, okay? So when you get a problem with the plunger, the camshaft, the solenoid not working properly, this is the effect that happens to your rail pressure, okay? Because it loses its ability to pump. So that's why you see that drop in pressure like that that basically goes out 120 degrees, okay? Like I said, each common rail pumping unit is energizing 120 degrees apart. And then each common rail pumping unit on its own is spaced out at 240 degrees, okay? So if I were to take another cursor here and measure this, this is going to prove it, okay? So I'm gonna get a cursor here. I'm gonna to go to this marker here. So it'll probably be just, hold on a second here. Ah. Go to here to here. So it's a little bit before the cursor here. So if I just move that a bit, right there. So right here in this number one cylinder box, this is common rail pump valve unit number one, and this is where it should be energizing, okay? But it's not. So that's how you prove out if it is an issue like that. You have to use an injection sink for number one. You hook up current clamps to the common rail pumping valve units, okay? And then you can look at the uh, distance between them all, okay? Now, if you're diagnosing a pump that does not have the common rail pumping valve uh, solenoids on it and it's just a straight mechanical pump, you could still do the same procedure here because you'll still be able to see it on the common rail pressure right here, okay? And then not only that, you can also go off of the timing of the pressure drops on the low pressure 
and see how they are spaced apart, okay? So if I go to these low pressure dips right here, so if I go to this dip right here, and then I go to this one here, okay? So if I go from that one to that one, like I said, the solenoids uh, that are operating uh, the spacing of them, it's, it fires every other 240 degrees. Well, look at my degree rulers. That's right at pretty close to 240 degrees, okay? So if you don't have electronic solenoids on this pump uh, to see it, you could still go off of the, a low side fuel pressure reading, okay? And I'm not using a pressure transducer on the low side fuel pressure. I'm just tapping the signal wire to the sensor. So uh, due to the fact that I have the capability with this scope to vertically enhance the trace is just, you know, it's, it's amazing. There's a lot of other scopes that can do the same thing, but that's the power um, of using equipment like this, whether it's Pico, ATS, you know, um, snap on it, it you know it doesn't matter uh, but uh, but anyway this is how you ID uh, an injection pump that is malfunctioning okay now the other thing too I want to show is as well is did our um, inlet restriction our vacuum change at all okay so let me zoom back out and let's uh, find where our inlet is And it's right here. So now I'm just going to vertically enhance this. And then let me just drag this down. There we go, that's better. Smooth that out. There we go. And as you can see, all of our uh, pulls on the gear pump when it's creating that vacuum restriction, they all look pretty good, don't see any variances. Okay, so you look at that and you're like, okay, so I know that on the gear pump side, in correlation with looking at the pressure here, okay, I know that the, uh, the gear pump is in good shape, okay? If I saw something different than this, then I would sus suspect that something is wrong on the low, or actually there would be something wrong on the low side, and then you would need to investigate the low side first and repair it before you continue your testing, okay? Because if this is off on your low, your low side pressure, then everything else is going to be off, okay? So, uh, like I said, by looking at this, we can figure out relatively quickly what's going on with this injection pump, okay? So um, that's what I wanted to show everybody today. Um, if anyone has any questions at all of how I did this technique, or you'd like to learn more about using scopes for troubleshooting, for troubleshooting on engines, data bus, things like that, um, you can sign up on the Diesel Laptops website. Go to www.training.diesellaptops.com and uh, you can sign up for classes there. I'm in the uh, Chicago location, so if you want to take a scope class with me and learn some cool stuff, I encourage you to come on out. Be more than happy to uh, show you what I know. All right. So I hope everyone has a, uh, a good afternoon and everyone take care and happy scoping, man. <laughs>